Hello fellow TIs, friends, brethren, and YouTubers. I found this here article about a month, well not a month ago, about a week or so ago. And what I found was kind of interesting about that was the fact that this here thing was written on January 10th of 2006. Well, anyways, you may not know this, or I probably haven't shared this with you, but it was it was in the fall of uh, 2005, someplace around that uh, September, October-ish area, that uh, I started to notice weird events and strange people uh, walking by my house and standing in front of my house for like a minute or two, and then start walking again. So yeah, so that, but took probably almost like three years before I finally found out and put a name to the face and found out that this here stuff is called gang stalking and uh, surveillance and whatever and, and and things like that when I listened to an interview between uh, Seth Daniel and brother Thomas but anyways before we get going into this article I want to uh, go over the bio of this here lady, Lynn Studer. This is just for the record for any of you uh, gatekeepers that are out there that are going to listen to this here and I know uh, I'll quite a bit about you little uh, your little nasty tactics of uh, what it is to be a gatekeeper and that seems to be a word that's uh, popped up by Zeph Daniel, it's popped up by Tony yeah, it's popped up by Brother Thomas. So when a certain word starts popping up and you're noticing a meme or something like that, that's something to cue into. So I just thought I'd add that and uh, let you know that you gatekeepers, your tricks aren't going to work like they used to do and I'm on to you. But anyways, and the fact is I wanted to go over this uh, Lynn's uh, Studer's uh, bio here just to let you know that she's just no floozy. But anyways, this here was uh, written almost, uh, what, seven years ago? Be in November of 2012 now. Well, anyways, she is a mother and wife. Studer has spent the past 10 years researching systems theory with a particular emphasis on education. She homeschooled two daughters, now grown and on their own. She has worked with legislators, both state and federal, on issues pertaining to systems governance and education reform. She networks nationwide with other researchers and citizens concerned with the transformation of her nation. She has traveled the United States and lived overseas. The title of this article by Lynn Studer is called, Are You Really Crazy or Are You Being Gang Stalked? For several days in a row, when doing errands in your car, you consistently come in contact with drivers who tailgate you, cut you off in traffic, or maybe pull out in front of you unexpectedly. Or you go out to get your mail and see someone sitting on a bicycle watching you from a distance. Or maybe you notice a sudden increase in strange cars driving slowly past your home. Or you get the feeling you are being followed but don't see anybody there. Or you find garbage thrown on your lawn or piles of dirt where dirt shouldn't be or you return to your home and notice that pictures or knickknacks aren't where they were when you left. This is, all just co is this all just coincidental or is there something more to it? You might even wonder if you just have an overactive imagination or maybe you've slipped a few cogs upstairs. Over the past 10 years a phenomenon has been apparent and more recently has been given a name gang stalking, also known as group stalking, vigilante stalking, and predatory gang stalking. Over a period of time, gang stalking has produced some commonalities among those targeted or victimized. The target is likely seen as a threat to a cause. The target most likely does not know the perpetrators of the gang stalking. Those involved in the gang stalking do not know the target. Those involved in the gang stalking do not necessarily know why they are gang stalking an individual. The stalking is subtle but, tar but targeted and can be seen as a inco incons inconsequential or everyday such as drive-by honking horns, 
drive-by yelling of obscenities. Hand gestures generally considered to be hostile in nature or vulgar. Vehicle stopping and standing on the street in front of a target's home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh yeah. Trash thrown on the target's lawn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Driveway and property in such a manner as to make it obvious that it has a deliberate act. Shining headlights or shining lights in the windows of the target's home. An increase in noise in the area of the target's home. Tailgating the target when dropping back repeatedly. Sending the target messages that let the target know that they are being watched, such as the names of family pets, the names of children, stores visited frequently, schools the children attend, day in and day out hang up calls or wrong numbers, vandalism to the home or property of the target, graffiti, 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 <laughs> in proximity to the target's uh, home, Graf graffiti, yeah, graffiti, whatever, shit. Okay, the gang stalking takes place over a period of time or number of years. The faces of those involved in gang stalking change frequently, but the perpetrators often remain constant. The intent of gang stalking is to render the target, the victim, psychologically demoralized, even to the point of committing suicide. Make the target appear to the larger community to be mentally unstable for the purposes of a discrediting and psychologically demoralizing the target, ensuring no one will believe the target when they claim they are being targeted. Alienate and marginalize the target from the larger community, even family, making it easy to psychologically demoralize and discredit the target. The number of reported incidents of gang stalking has increased measurably since the early 1990s when the transformation of American society to systems philosophy began in earnest. Ah, yeah, early, so actually let's just say it's the transformation into communism. Gang stalking holds no political association with those targeted covering the political spectrum of liberal, centrist, conservative, ultra-left, ultra-right. People involved in gang stalking display a common trait of needing to feel that they have power over their target even though they may not know that person. Group dynamics, how individuals interact in a group, a general need of the individual for human contact and interaction plays a key role in the structure of gang stalking. One high-ranking law, enfor law enforcement official on the condition of anonymity has stated that now listen closely everybody. Law enforcement is under strict orders that they are to ignore all cases of gang stalking and if possible to avoid evidence that the victim is criminally insane. And listen very carefully here too, and especially you gatekeepers. The criminal justice system is strictly under the control of a, a small elite who ensure that no charges are passed, pressed against the instigators of gang stalking. Gang stalking relies heavily on the target becoming so psychologically demoralized that he or she believes there must be something wrong with him or her and is therefore afraid to say something wrong with him, afraid to say so anything for, fear, for fears of others will think them crazy. Two, the target will have no evidence beyond his or her word that the gang stalking is happening. The target will have no detailed records or doctrine showing that when, what, when, where, and to what extent. The target will not be able to find out who the perpetrators are or those involved in gang stalking. Anyone who believes they are being gang stalking should. Okay, there, uh, everybody. Keep detailed records and documentation of times, dates, and details, making those records as soon as uh, the incident is apparent so details are not lost over time. Take pictures of any evidence left by the perpetrators making sure to include a point of reference in the picture for identification purposes. For instance, if trash is strewn on, strewn on the law, stru mm, can't even talk here, if trash is strewn on the lawn, 
take close-ups, but then take pictures showing the house, garage, or even car in the picture as a point of reference that the garbage was actually where you claimed it was. Keep detailed records of any interaction with law enforcement, even when law enforcement are friendly and appear to be empathetic. Keep track of who the responding officer is, what department he works for, and what he tells you, and what he does. If he removes evidence from the scene, note how he handles it, what he does with it. Know the procedures for preserving evidence and observe if the officer follows those procedures. Write it all down so details aren't lost over time. Ask for an event number and incident number. Yeah, tracking number. Police report number. Yep. If you believe you are being gang stalked, get a psychological evaluation immediately. This establishes that you are mentally stable when those involved in law enforcement try to intone that you are somehow mentally deranged. Oh yeah, yeah. And if not, somehow they'll uh, send you in one way or another. Yep. Because it's part of their algorithm. Yeah, the gatekeepers. Yep. Yep. The gatekeepers. Somebody in a chain of gatekeepers. But anyways, let's move on. If you believe you are being gang stalked, don't be afraid to speak up. There was a time when people being stalked were never listened to, were considered to be off in the head. No, stalking someone is a crime. The more you speak up, the better chance there is that gang stalking will not continue to operate under the radar. To learn more about gang stalking, enter the term in your internet search engine. There are several good websites and more coming every day with information, with information on gang stalking. Support groups are also being formed to help people who have been the victims of this heinous dehumanizing act. Footnotes. Perpetrators of gang stalking do not always participate in the activities tar targeted at the victim, but stay in the background on scene. Yes, so there seems to be kind of a, a misperception between what a perpetrator and a uh, gang stalker is or more or less the minion the low-level minions that you run into the guys up the chain they're the perpetrators they're in control uh, they're the ones that yeah they're not going to go to jail they'll uh, they'll uh, put one of their minions and put them at risk but anyways uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to listen to this uh, yeah, I must have been under another one of those uh, supernatural attacks because the old voice it just uh, wasn't working this time around. But anyways, we got the article, and I'll also uh, put the link in the description. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope this has helped, and please spread the word.